What is a time when you really weren't supposed to laugh but just couldn't help yourself? My dad's funeral. The service had ended. We are standing in front of the church, waiting for his casket to be walked down some steps. I started to chuckle. I was thinking, wouldn't it be funny if they dropped it? And he fell out like in the movie Fatso, I told my mom. And she giggled at that thought as well. It was a much needed break from the sadness. Dad actually liked that movie as well, so he would have laughed at the thought as well. I was at summer camp as a kid, and one of the other kids there seemed to have a slight developmental impairment. There was a fly buzzing around his head, and he smacked himself in the forehead as hard as he could to try to kill the fly. He missed the fly, and knocked himself backwards off the bench. I had to walk away, but I was laughing so hard I could barely see. Grandpa's funeral. He had a bumper sticker on the bathroom mirror that said old fishermen never die. They just smell like that. I started chuckling and losing the fight to suppress it when my brother asked me what was wrong with me. I whispered the phrase in his ear. Soon our whole row, right behind grandma, was snorting and chuffing. She turned to give a few of us the stink eye when my brother whispered it in her ear. She froze, then turned back to face forward. Soon her shoulders were shaking as she fought the giggles along with the rest of us. After the service she told us grandpa would have loved knowing what that bumper sticker caused. I was in dental school. We were placing two implants on this 70 something old veteran guy. I was just assisting. Placing dental implants is like screwing in a lag bolt. First you drill a hole in the bone then you screw in the implant. The dentist who was doing the procedure was drilling the hole into the bone and he just about got the drill as deep as he wanted it, but the bone hardened up, and the drill was slowing down. He looks it at me and says, the bone is just too hard down there. We still have the drill in the guy's mouth, but he starts flapping it up and down, and making noises, like he wants to say something. The dentist pulls the drill out of his bone and the patient immediately blurts out. That's what she said. The dentist and I just looked at each other and bust up laughing. It's one of my favorite experiences from working on someone. During sixth form art lessons my teacher got angry. He had a habit of ranting. Getting angry with his own rants. Then blowing up. It was quite the entertaining spectacle. One time he was pissed off at the class for taking the afternoon so lightly. He angrily ranted his way into his deep passion of art then stated, When I see this rock. I don't see a rock. I see art. It drives me. It turns me on. Well. In the silent pause that followed as he realized his phrasing. I let out a single sharp snigger which erupted the class into hysterics. He nearly chucked me off the course. Took my GF to the ballet. Not really my cup of tea, but she was a dancer and knew she'd enjoy it. Surprisingly got quite into it as it went on until someone in the audience let out a supersonic fart. We were easily 20 rows away and felt the shock waves as it blew past us. We both looked at each other and tried not to laugh, but we broke down in full hysterics. Weirdly we got more dirty looks and a worse reaction than the farter. We were watching a video about black rights in class and the guy in the video said hello and asterisk 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 as in a really formal voice and I cracked up a little. I got in trouble. I go to a English public school. Which is an American's equivalent of a private school. My great aunt Minimum's funeral. Roughly 30 years ago in northern New Jersey. Go ahead and do the accents in your head. You won't be exaggerating. First. We are walking in with my grandmother who was in early stage dementia and keeps asking where we are. We keep telling her. She keeps asking. Finally, in frustration, my mother raises her voice and says, Your sister, Minimum, is having a funeral. So my grandmother says, in this really affronted voice, Well, what is she doing that for? Then we are seated and nothing happens for 20 minutes until finally the rabbi, approximately 150 years old, comes shuffling in. He makes his way up to the lectern and says, I'm sorry I'm late, I was in a car accident. This other driver cuts me off. And this lady behind me says, absolutely deadpan. So what are we? The insurance adjusters, 100% true story. Bonus epilogue, Aunt Minimum was a truly terrible human being, and literally no one was saddened by her death at age 93. At the end of the service, 
The 97-year-old widower stood up and said. I was at a Pentecostal church. Okay. And people were jumping up and down in the aisle and doing cartwheels and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Now I can finally have a life. Which he proceeded to do. For another 10 years. We started a band with some friends when was in 8th grade. I was getting okay I shot guitar and another friend played bass. A super confident friend of ours decided he was going to be the lead singer. So we decided to bring our instruments and stay up all night at his place to work on some stuff. The bassist and I learned what was at the time the brand new single Stay Together for the Kids by Blink 182. Now, we hadn't heard the singer do his thing. He needed us to be playing while he did. Sure. Whatever. So after we learned it, we were ready for a run through. And that's when it happened. He let out an out of pitch falsetto yell during the chorus. Squeaking here and there. It sounded like frozen hash browns in a blender. It was just so unexpected because the kid was so sure of himself. The bassist and I stopped dead, looked at each other and laughed. He cried and ran upstairs. Sorry Brandon. High school English class. A few days before I got in trouble for sleeping in and just barely making it on time to my first period class. I was called a hibernating bear by my teacher. Which I found funny. A few days later we are doing oral book reports. There was this kid who had a stutter who was doing his report. He was struggling. But the class was being patient with him. Then he got to a point in his report where he started talking about a bear in his book. Stuttering along. Remembering just a few days before how I was called a bear for sleeping in. And how funny I thought that was I busted up laughing. The entire class gasped in horror at me. I was not laughing at the kid for stuttering. But I realized that's exactly what it looked like so I didn't even try to defend myself. My best friend called me saying that she just pulled the plug on her father and he passed away. I have known this man for years and he was practically part of my family. After she told me what it was like to pull the plug and she was sobbing I only knew one way to ease the tension. So I asked her have you tried turning him off and on again? She laughed while sobbing and as did I. My great grandmother's funeral. My mother's family are full of drama queens. In that funeral. The two daughters of my great grandmother made a spectacle, but I will tell just the funny one. My grandmother's sister gone crazy and tried to wake up her mother, screaming. A group of persons came to try to calm her down, but it didn't work. So they tried to take her off of the place for take some air, but was very difficult. They managed to do it, but was necessary for men. One for each arm and leg. She managed to have one of her arms free and the last scene was them taking her while she was screaming noooo dramatically with one arm in direction of my great grandmother's body. I tried so hard to not laugh because even if was a sad moment was hilarious. Note, she never cared about her mother when she was alive and leaved all the work for the other sister, my grandmother and brother. My cousin. During her dad's funeral, the preacher said something along the lines of if uncle could say something to every one of you today, it would be to accept Jesus into your hearts. Yeah. That would be one of the absolute last things anyone would expect uncle to say to anyone ever. I was sitting behind her and she snorted slash snickered really loudly and her mom responded in kind but tried to stifle it somewhat. I think about that a lot. My cousin is awesome. A few years ago. There was this singing event at my dad's church, so he made me, my mom, and my brother go. We are not Christian like him. So we are sitting in the church and people are singing, and then this lady comes up. I look at the program and the song she's gonna sing is called How Beautiful Are The Feet. I was like this is gonna be good, and I look at my mom and brother and they seem to be just as ready to hear the song as me. So this lady starts singing in the most boisterous, obnoxious, loud. Shaky, operatic voice I've ever heard. Ho w b u to fullery t h e f t o f g o d. E x c. I started laughing hysterically. I looked at my brother, and he was laughing too. I looked at my mom, and she was trying her best to stay straight faced. We all ended up laughing in my dad's church that night. I was in outpatient treatment, and there was a kid who was pretty introverted. He didn't really talk to anyone. Always had a hood up. Went out of his way 
to never interact with anyone. Socially kind of awkward. Anyway, there was a girl going on and on about how she doesn't trust other females and only hangs out with guys. R slash not look a thea third girls etc. Anyway she's going on and on and on and all of a sudden this kid stands up and just screams at her to shut the fuck up. We were all kind of taken aback, and she of course snapped back all ghetto, and he finally turned to rush out of the room, and ended up tripping on a chair, and flailing to the ground. I. Fucking. Lost. It. I was trying so hard to keep it together, but the whole situation was so absurd, and then how dramatically he tripped just sent me over the edge. I thought other people were going to find it as funny, but they were just kind of shocked. Another time I was in a mall food court and these two girls broke out in a fight, and one of the girls had a decorative cookie tin you get at Christmas, and started wailing on the other girl with it. I was dying laughing, and their friends were crying and freaking out. It sounded like a bunch of birds going apeshit. Sad story of my sister-in-law being a victim of the opioid crisis. She loved life, and had a dark sense of humor. I was with my wife and her parents at the funeral home going over the details. My mother-in-law pulls out her checkbook to write the check for the funeral director. It is check number 666. We all have a good laugh. Syl would have loved it. The director didn't know what to make of us. I was telling my therapist the first time I visited them depression jokes and stuff, and was laughing playing it off but then I was taken out of the room and my mother was questioned, and they called me back in and basically told me I needed to be put into a hospital ASAP. Once in my apprenticeship we smoked a fat joint in our dorm with a guy. He told us how the song that's playing now reminds him how his former girlfriend killed herself. He was completely serious but me, and my friend were stoned as fuck like really baked, and we couldn't help but giggle at him. That was awkward as fuck, but we really couldn't help it. I feel bad about it even today. But the exact fact that it wasn't a laughing matter at all made us laugh. Fortunately the guy was stone deaf too, and even he laughed with us after a while. He really was a nice guy, and we spent many nice evenings with him even after all that. <laughs>